Hello, I'm Elle and welcome to my channel. I create weekly videos around ethnic fashion. In today's video, I'll be talking about Mexican artisanal fashion. I was thinking about what videos to make and I couldn't really help but think, man, like I miss Mexico and artisanal fashion and I'd really just like die for it. Right now we live in Montana, but I was raised in a small suburb in Chicago and there I was brought up by a family of Mexican Americans with Mexican culture where I was shown pictures and videos of my aunts and uncles long passed away, but I couldn't help but be fascinated with their clothing and how I could still keep some parts of them alive. And a lot of my culture has been passed down this way, um, first learning about it and then incorporating it into my life. But it's been really hard to like acclimate with Mexican artisanal fashion in particular because all the clothing I've ever known has been through malls, through secondhand stores that have been filled with westernized trends. And any Mexican, Mexican related clothing has also been essentially culturally appropriated and there's been no credit for local designers and it's mostly been machine made and a lot of the designs and cuts have been reformatted for modern times. And so I was thinking about how Mexican artisanal fashion though has such beauty when it's made right, when unique materials are incorporated, and when it's made by women in communities that have passed down their skills for centuries. And it also holds a lot of history and national identity and it's so specific to each region in Mexico, the skills vary by it. And there's so much nuance and unique garment workers and garments that are made all across, across the country in Mexico. And so Mexicanas and Mexicanos have been making fibers, cloths, and textiles since 1400 BCE. And the fibers used during the pre-Hispanic period included the yucca, the palm, and the mawao plant, and the use of cotton in the hot lowlands of the south. And after the Spanish conquest of the Aztec Empire, the Spanish introduced new fibers such as silk and wool, as well as European foot treadle loom. But this effect throughout Mexico was really different since indigenous people of Mexico lived in separate communities and they were all geographically divided by mountains, bodies of water, and forests. And so each tribe had already developed their own cultures, their own dialects, and their own manners. And so after centuries of colonialism mixing their culture with indigenous, African, and other Spanish influences and populations, Mexican clothing has evolved in what we know it for today. And yeah, you may be thinking of vibrant colors, handcrafted textiles of animals, a lot of traditional cuts that we all know and love, but estos estilos are like art pieces to me. However, they may have been kept alive and a desire for the creator and observer to see cultural art in our everyday lives. It could have maybe been midnight at, at the supermarket one day in Montana, thousands of miles away from its native origin, but these clothing are still loved and appreciated for its cultural appreciation where the observer and the wearer can really enjoy it together. And Mexican traditions and stories can live in a very material way through clothing. Despite the horrible colonial legacy they have persisted and, and lived through and it makes moving to white centered places for me personally feel less lonely when I wear what's true to me and it helps me be filled with a rich wisdom in my blood because these garments are connected to it and I get reconnected to hope also through traditional Mexican clothing, even if it wasn't made by art artisans, because it reminds me of the fortaleza, the fortitude, you can say, the strength of blooming despite how hard your surroundings may be, even when there isn't a lot of resources and opportunities granted within your immediate area. Clothing has that power for me. Things are also like a ceiling and a bigger picture and a landscape of light waiting, waiting for things to be seen and these skills are needed essentially in today's fashion industry. Mexican fashion has been passed down for centuries at a very young age. Fortunately, it's being lost. And so I have often asked my mom and my grandparents what ancestral legacy they hold and what skills they have to pass on. But 
a lot of it has been forgotten and erased um, so there is no straight answer for me but it is a loss because there are so much rich and detailed stories that are connected to my indigenous roots and I feel like the legacy of the colonizer is cherished the most when things are lost and my ancestors were effecti effectively colonized their traditions and legacies were, were erased for the namesake of whiteness for fast fashion and the only remaining piece to your beauty is photos that I could hope to only learn and replicate one day and yeah I really wish I could have my ancestors unique Mexican designs and skills that were once passed down from elder to baby but I think there is still hope that I can still learn these things from existing traditions that are present in current day Mexico. Some handcrafted Mexican fashion include upiles and sarapes that are often embroidered. For the upil, it's a woven and embroidered blouse or dress of pre-Columbian origin. There are the main elements of Mexican traditional dress. And it's awesome, actually, that artisanal fashion is often made with natural and sustainable fibers. And I love rebosos, which are long rectangle shawls that first came into style in Mexico in the 16th century. And the reboso is actually one of the most labor-intensive garments on earth. Before any looming begins, the threads are wrapped with thousands of knots and are dyed, and then the knots are removed, which is a process known as ikat. The upiles then are woven with symbols like trees of life or creation myths and of lightness and darkness. And I actually learned that traditionally indigenous weave tells a story that's reflective of their lives and or of their ancestors legacy but while I was doing my research on artisanal fashion I discovered how many artisanal communities especially the indigenous ones are assimilating more and more children are going to school in plaid skirts and acrylic sweaters since they've become mandatory which have replaced their native whoopiness. From the Zapatistas rebellion in the 1990s, the Mexican government has made some attempts at reform, including recognition of indigenous cultures, but new fashion markets in Mexico's have and are well on their way in compromising the heritage and culture of the artisans that are centered in indigenous communities. And it's coming at an incredible price since indigenous cultures and skill sets are effectively being destroyed and erased through that. And it's a huge loss. It's it's the trade-off of survival. And I recognize that because people need to live, they need to survive. Artisans need to find a way to, to feed their family. But also there's a beauty in artisans since they've described their work, uh, doing artisanal work as feeling connected to it where it's a process of reflection for them where they can reflect on their personal problems and create solutions from it and they feel connected to the loom because of it and they can show their ancestors through their garments and portray how they feel within their creations and I do know that we need to go back to it we need to go back to the loom whether literally or metaphorically we need time to feel connected to reflection to our true selves where it's rooted in history and culture and practicing with time at least one thing or one method that has mattered for people who raised you and who raised them I think will allow me to effectively connect with my ancestors and I also think it's a place of creating beauty and art that has deep thought and work and it's just not material things but it represents something so much more and I think that's what we need community support and connection as well all parts of production of artisanal fashion even weaving needs to be remembered too and we also really need to go back to like localized forms of fashion production and consumption that's natural to artisanal practices and it requires us to see the legacy of ancestry and it would also promote cultural techniques symbols symbolism and the use of local materials too but it does pose a question in midst of fast fashion. There's a lot of nuance and big questions, but the current fashion industry and the brands are only really pushing cheap clothing. This is called fast fashion, and it's completely separated from any culture or any spiritual form of production. And to change this, brands will need to be required to collaborate and practice peer-to-peer, -peer, ideally with local indigenous communities, producing artisanal fashion of its traditional forms of dress that also makes some spaces for modern interpretations of it as well because we live in modern society right now. Brands should respect their livelihoods and their culture and 
their aims for sustainability and it would help them have jobs and opportunities and not be stuck in toxic cycles of poverty uh, which is often seen today and instead create mutual trust where everyone is involved in the creation process and it would just be more than business it would essentially create cultural value or cultural currency it would help skills and stories to be passed down for for mindfulness to be kept alive and for what feels most true to be uplifted and empowered. And on a more practical level, artisanal fashion would be more children and future communities have viable chances to hold on to their traditions and skills. One that can help their families thrive and have a dignified life. And it would be a space for opportunities where fashion enterprises could really embody respect basic human rights and traditional cultural expressions and sustainable practices. But yeah, practically speaking, children would be able to go to school, eat proper meals, and where parents could embody their ancestral legacy and where all the beautiful clothing wouldn't be lost, where a world didn't exist where the only thing remaining of their culture were in photos. So there is so much beauty, like I said, and so much love I have as a Latina from Mexican artisanal fashion. I may not know a lot and I won't lie and say that I do, but I do have a lot to learn and fashion brands also do as well and they should properly honor traditional cultural expressions and traditional values and I hope that we can continue to celebrate Mexican artisanal fashion and also its modern interpretations as well for its immediate and apparent beauty and also for, for the richness it provides for all of us and for our families. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a little bit of a reflection on my Mexican artisanal fashion journey. If you want to see anything in specific on my channel, just let me know. This one was a little bit more long-ended and just like tangent-y, but those are my little reflections and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and subscribe if you want to see more from me. See ya! Bye!